name. We're going to come on to our backs. And so if you have um, with you um, a strap, you can have that, a block, or again, pillows work, a dish towel works as a strap. Um, so does even, I was watching one of my friend Jill's videos, and she used uh, her husband's coat tie, and I was like, that's a great idea. No one uses those anymore. Uh, so you can um, use that as well. Okay, so you're going to head on to our back. And we're going to do a little bit of mobility work. So we're going to cross the right leg over the left, like you're sitting cross-legged in a chair, and then bring your legs up with your hands, and then bring your legs down, and then lift up to a one-legged bridge. So the hip points are neutral. I'm pressing through my bottom heel. Lower the hips down. Uncross. Recross left leg. Again, using your core to try and relax your neck or leg on a blanket. Bring the legs in. Let the legs lower. Lift up into a bridge. And then uncross. So you go as slow as you want, friends. Find your breath. And again, take your time so that this is the pace that your body wants to move at at 9 o'clock in the morning or wherever you are. I know some of you are joining from somewhere else. I think I saw Peter on there and he's I think all the way in Belgium. So that's amazing. Thank you for joining. You can use your hands to press down. You can allow your, again, your neck to be easy. So that means laying out of blankets that your neck is long. Please do that. Use your breath. And again, if you're noticing the hips feel a little tighter today or you don't feel as energized as you want or just really anything, right? We're, we're showing here. So you can just send that a care for you or that loving awareness. I'm going to do a couple more on each side. Make sure that low back feels nice and long as you do this, as you're bringing the legs in. So it's not so much about how far you bring them in, but more that you can feel the belly relax towards the back of the pelvis. So you can rely on your core strength. So the last cycle here. Breathing in, breathing out, relaxing your jaw and your face. Okay. And so unravel for a moment, just kind of pause and let your body find some stillness, just kind of feel out the ripples of that movement as you, as you kind of breathe in, just stop for a moment. And then allow yourself to a windshield wiper the legs when you feel ready. You can move your arms up a little higher if that would feel good. I like going wide apart with my feet because it gives me a little bit more range of motion. Okay. And then the next time you come back to that neutral position, just pause there. We'll recross the right leg again, just like we did before. So we're going to add a little bit of core work with this one. So um, for some of you, having your hands behind your head will be way more supportive uh, because um, if you don't do that, you're going to notice that your neck. Uh oh, I think I'm losing the video. I don't know if we're. I want to make sure the video wasn't being lost. Can you guys? Can you guys still see? I want to make sure my phone didn't do something weird. Okay, I think we're okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so if you want to support the back of your um, head with your hands, please do that. Okay, and you don't have to do the eagle arms. If you'd like to start to um, mobilize the shoulders, we'll go the left arm over right. So as you're ready, you're going to pull the belly down, the low back's long, and we bring the elbows towards the thighs, okay? And then we're going to tap the toes, tap the fingers. So we're going to lift the shoulders up as we do that. Exhale. Inhale. And I'm really going to try and draw my belly towards my low back so I'm not gripping my abs. And again, this shoulder work doesn't work. Just hands behind your head is just fine. So exhaling as we draw the ribs towards the hips, let the jaw be easy, the head is nice and supported if I need to, and as I lengthen the toes and the shoulders down. So we're gonna do four more just like this, and then we're gonna change it up just a bit. Good breathing in, breathing out. Good, slow as you need to go. Then on this next one, we're gonna hold it up. 
Okay, so it's like you're in eagle pose. So those of you that, again, feel the neck's tensing, this is, again, responding with care to the body. You'll just keep your head down, and you'll squeeze the inner thighs. You'll lift the up arms towards the top or uh, towards the sky. Otherwise, if you want to bring the elbows towards the thighs, we're going to pause here. Again, neck and jaw are easy. Feeling strength in my inner thighs, in my core. Getting a little bit of toning through the chest muscles. Couple more breaths. And then you're going to let the legs come down just as they are. Lifting up towards a bridge, we're going to open up the arms like a goal post, okay? So the elbows go nice and wide. So it's gonna, you have to watch the tendency to kind of let one hip be higher than the other. And so just again, allow yourself to be in that bridge if that right thigh touches does what it wants. So from here, we're gonna allow the arms to kind of open and close, or rotate, I should say, more often. Uh, letting the palms face down, the palms, and you'll notice that everyone has different mobility. So sometimes that is more difficult. You won't get to go all the way down, it's totally fine. Internally, externally. We're doing this at the root of the arm, so not the elbow joint. You're gonna start to feel some heat building in those legs. So keep the low back lengthening. It's not how high you lift the legs, but more that you can feel that awareness of the leg muscles strengthening, the core muscles supporting. And then a couple more. Nice, and then lower the legs down. And then this time we're gonna lift the legs up. And as we do a little bit of core work again, we're gonna lower the legs towards the left as we aim towards the outer right hip. And then we'll come back to neutral. And then again, we lower the legs towards the floor as we lift the shoulder blades off the mat. Come back to the center. So it's like a twisted eagle. Good, and you're gonna do about 10 of these. So exhaling as we lift, I'm dropping the legs, I'm scooping the tailbone long, and back to the center. So the trick is really to get that right scapula off the mat if you can. And if you can't, you can use your palm to press to lift to get a little bit more support. But again, you're just working towards an awareness of what you can do. A few more. Good, keep breathing. Keep the jaw and neck easy. Taurus rules the neck, so sometimes we feel our necks to get a little achier, we feel ourselves coughing a little bit more, right, to move some energy to the neck. Now take the arms out to the side, and then you're gonna pick your hips up, move them to the right to drop them to the left for a little bit of a twist, twisted root. Palms can face up, palms can face down, a block under your bottom leg might be nice. So if you can, sweep the arms up, sweep the arms out to the side, just kind of move them around a bit, kind of feeling a, a maybe a different chest stretch, you can kind of, even roll the arm in big circles if that feels good. We're really just exploring our space. And so giving ourselves permission to see what feels good today. Okay, using the strength of your arms, if you need that to support your core, pull your belly back, lifting up. And then unbinding the legs and again, finding some stillness and just letting the ripples of that movement move through us. You might even again rest your hand on your heart for a moment. Just uh, notice what's there as we're waking up the hips. Okay, left leg crosses over right. Bring the legs towards you. Again, supporting right arm over left. If that was working on the first side, so cross the arms or at more of a neck support. Again, as you're ready, we're lifting. So the shoulders come off the mat, the hips maybe a tiny bit, then we tap the toes. We can totally find to just be doing the legs if that's even the most supportive for the core, the low body, the pelvis. So just noticing what you need. Really letting that exhaling come out through the mouth, a little bit more forceful, almost like your cooling hot soup. It can be a really great way to activate those more core support muscles. Okay, a few more. Breathing, taking a break if you need to. And on that last one, we're gonna hold that pose. So maybe some of you are head, uh, head down, shoulders down, maybe some of you are holding it here. Really connect all those muscles along the front line of the body, from the chest to the core to the inner thighs. Make sure the neck is not taut. 
and then the legs come down. Then the arms release for a moment and then lift the hips up into that bridge pose. And again, not as important how high as much as you feel that right gluteal muscle really working. From here, we're going to take the arms one over, uh, one down, one up, one down, one up. You can even rotate the arms as you do this. Stretching the arms apart as we do this, getting those shoulders to wake up. I always like big size, it can be really helpful. Okay, you're almost there. A couple more really big breaths. Then as you're ready, you're gonna lower the hips down. Okay, so we're gonna bring the legs up. And again, as we drop them towards the right, we're gonna lift up and go over towards our left hip. So about 10 times, so exhale. And again, it can just be dropping the legs towards the side and bringing them back up too. So you're kind of picking the level that feels right. And again, the trick on this one is getting that left scapula off the mat. So trying not to force it through pulling on the head. That's the trick is really to allow this to be core strength, not neck strength. So the head's along for the ride. So we're not trying to let the head connect first, but more the lifting of the scapula happens, and then the head's just following that action. And then you have a few more here. Nice and slow. Again, being kind to your body, especially when we work the core. Then as you're ready, arms go out to the side. We'll move the hips up and to the left for more range of motion. Drop the legs to the right. And then again, a block under this bottom thigh can help. And again, you could play around with that arm sweeping. That can feel really good. Kind of having that twist be more fluid. And you might notice as you do this some sensation in the upper back that you can connect to. A couple more breaths. And again, stillness for a lot of you will feel good. So you can just pause and be there. You need to use your hands to help support lifting your legs. Go ahead and do that. Lift up. And then uncross the legs, take them down to the floor. Again, pausing to feel that ripple effect of doing all that hip work. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. And then as you're ready, you're gonna take your knees out and your hands will come to the front of the ankles. Roll the ankles a bit both directions. And the legs are gonna point up to the sky. So pull the toes towards the nose. We're gonna internally rotate the thighs, but your toes turn in, your heels turn out. We're gonna externally rotate it, heels and toes in. And then bring them back to neutral, and then open the legs. You can always bend the knees if that's too intense. And then bring the heels in, grab into the inner uh, shins, open up. And then legs go straight to so let hamstring stretch, internally rotate, externally rotate. Back to neutral, open through the legs. And then bend the knees, reach in. We're gonna do this two more times. Go as slow or as quickly as you like. Same up. We internally rotate at the root of the leg, we externally rotate, neutral legs, open it up. Heels come in, we might have to take a re-grab. Last time through. Belly is strong, internally, externally, neutral, and out. And as you're ready, bring those knees in. Hug them in, do those circles or anything that feels good to you, and we're gonna rock and roll ourselves up to a seat. Arch it up to all fours. So just check in if you need to readjust anything. Let me know anything you can see. You can feel free to, to do that. All right, friends, as we're ready, we're going to come to an all fours position. So turn those hands out. Find uh, the strength of your core. So as you're pressing from the shoulder blades into the hands and from the hips, we're going to take that right leg back behind us. We're going to tuck the toes under and press through that heel. 
So we're going to get a nice little cap stretch. So I don't know if someone has, I think, their audio on, so you might want to make sure and do a little check and make sure your audio is off. I oh, can't tell. Oh, I think you. I think that just did it. And as you're ready, you're going to come back up. We're going to hover that right leg and a couple of times do that internal, external rotation. So again, not laying into that left hip, trying to stay nice and tall. And then sweeping that right leg behind us so that you're on the ball now under the foot, coming into the forearms. So you can either twist if you'd like, you can stay down, you can stretch the hand out, kind of feeling around with that. You might even switch the arm, see which one feels. Okay, take another deep breath or two. So you might kind of, you, as you work the left hip back, you might notice a little bit more is there. Okay, now open up that left ankle so you can slide the right knee behind it. This is the eagle pose that we did on our back. So again, you could stay here and work the balance, or if you're really looking for a challenge and a way to practice that compassion, you're going to loop the left arm under the right, and you're going to try and balance. And every time I do this in class, someone falls over, and then we all get to just laugh and be like, it's okay, we're human, and really like, what does this matter? So press into those forearms, round your upper back so you can feel the neck relax. And again, I like my legs wider, for a base of support, you could try to squeeze them in and notice if that's harder or easier. Again, smiling a little bit, because again, we're just trying to connect to the core, the shoulders. And then again, you're gonna unbind the arms. The hands come up, we're still in that eagle pose, and we're gonna slide back and forth a bit. Making sure this doesn't bother your knees. So if it does, you can untangle the legs. Couple times. And then coming back to that neutral position, that right leg still stays swings back, and then it steps forward over to the right. Then we're going to tuck the left toes under, and we're going to go forward and back again. So my right leg is just out to the side. My uh, arch and my knee are level in one leg. And then as you come back, you might flip the toe and see a little groin stretch. You can play around with where that foot goes. And as you're ready, coming back up, lifting that leg and then swinging it back. And then toe down, press into the floor so much that you feel this left knee kind of get really light and then just let it swing and hinge a bit. It's like really heavy in the socket of your hip and I'm really using the broadening of my scapula to lift. And then coming into plank pose, downward facing dog. If you need a child's pose, please sub that in. Totally fine. Again, broadening collarbones, thing the heels to send. If you want to move around in this, you can. Breathe in, breathe out. And then as you're ready, setting those knees on the floor. So we're back into all fours. So if you want to cat cow, feel free to do that. That feels good to kind of wake up the shoulders in that way. We'll continue getting those shoulders stretched. Then the left toes come back and we let the heel reach back. So again, I'm getting a nice calf stretch. My core is nice and strong. And I can come in and out of that a few times or stay in stillness. Then I'm gonna lift that leg up and I'm gonna internally and externally rotate. Notice my left hip point staying down. I'm doing this work at the joint. And I'm really trying to lift up out of my right hip so I'm not heavy on the right thigh bone. And then I'm going to swing that left leg over to the right as far as I can. Without my right hip coming forward, I swing it back. I can stay on my hands. And I could still twist if I wanted on my hands, or just walk the hands forward, or come into the forearms. So again, I might want to twist. That might feel good. It might feel better just to come down. And again, work the right hip back towards the back edge of my back. So you may or may not be getting a whole lot of sensation. You're just kind of feeling this will repeat something similar to this shape later, I think. Okay, and then widening the right ankle towards the side edge of your mat, pulling the left knee behind you. So again, we're going to do that eagle pose. So you can, can stay on your forearms and play with eagle like this, or you can allow again the left arm or the right arm to go into the left. So again, I showed you a wide base of support that uh, I thought was easier to balance, but a lot of people will try to squeeze it in and then they feel more awareness of their core. So broaden the upper back.
Let your head go. Okay, one or two more breaths to balance. And then we're going to unravel the arms, and then we're going to keep the ankles wide and just again vacillating forward and back, if that works for you. Forward and back. And then coming into that neutral pose, we're going to step the left leg out to the side. And again, my knee and my foot are in one line. Tuck the right toes under, and I sink, sink back, and I come forward. So I might feel a little bit of a groin stretch as I do that. You can hold it if that feels good. You might even pop the toe up and see if you like that. And coming back up, swinging this leg back. And then tucking the toe under, and again, I'm really pushing and allowing my upper back to cap so that this knee becomes really heavy and I can just let it be heavy like a pendulum. And just let it kind of move. I could do circles if I want, and just kind of letting it swing. And then stepping into plank, downward facing dog. Okay, friends. <sighs> Bubble your lips, sigh. Someone can hear you, so you can make all the sounds that you want. Okay, so slowly as you're ready, coming into plank pose, your first plank pose, place your knees down, and then again, long through the chest as you slowly come down to the floor. Untuck your toes, walk your hands forward for a low cobra. So my hands are in front of my shoulders. I'm gonna pull them back and lengthen from the crown of my head to my toes. And maybe I keep doing that, keep doing that, but I'm feeling really grounded through my low belly, through my thighs, and the tops of my feet. My neck is long. And then all the way down, walk the hands back, child's pose or all fours, then back to downward facing dog. Okay, so you're gonna take that right leg wide outside your mat, and you're gonna take the left leg wide outside your mat. So we're gonna squat. So for a lot of us, um, elbows on, or um, forearms on the thighs is a better pose for a squat and coming all the way down. But a lot of you will know that you can go all the way down and that feels okay. So just kind of play around with where you need to be today. And then we're gonna stretch the arms up and we're gonna come right back down. So we're gonna do this for about a minute just to kind of get some heat through the body. So this can still be mindful. So I can do this and I can go as slow as I need to go. And I can do this and I can pause if I need more time or to accommodate anything in my joints. So just building some heat. Incorporating the breath. Stretch. Maybe I start to do some side stretching. Maybe that feels good for my shoulders. Maybe it's goddess arms and then crossing in. So I can really explore mobilizing shoulders as I do this. Maybe I'm alternating. You should now be hopefully feeling some heat coming through the body. We'll do two more. And then settle into stillness. So we're gonna hold for a few breaths. Wherever you are in that pose, if you're able to get your elbows inside your thighs, allow them to widen so you can move weight from the inner arch to the outer arch, so that you have a more balanced arch position. Breathe in, breathe out. Hands down, step the left leg back, step the right leg back. Plank pose. Pausing here, knees down if you need to. Come forward, you can set your knees down all the way to the belt. Untuck your toes, low cobra again, arms forward. And again, as if you're a straight line from crown to toe, pull your hands back, get yourself even longer, and then continue that length as you lift the chest. All the way down, hands come back, child's pose are all fours, We'll meet in downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Step your left leg forward, this time not turned out. 
and then step your right leg forward. So this is a squat pose where we can hold on to the front of the ankles. So you can make a hook with your thumb and your index and wrap it around. So it's like a squat with a long spine. So we're gonna come up and we're gonna squat back down. You can even just touch the toes of the shins, come up, and you can come back down here. But the toes are neutral. So maybe there's a slight moving in of the stance. And again, you could reach up and I could reach down. Again, I could alternate. I want you to be creative with your arms. We're just trying to get, again, blood circulating through the extremities. Not as long on this one. Just changes up the feeling of the five bones in the joint, right? Because they're not turned out, they're in a neutral position. There's about five more. I'm just kind of rolling my shoulders and kind of feeling that. Okay, one more, then I want you to pause. So if you can, hold on to your ankles, but let your seat go back. So I'm trying to get my knees or my ankles not forward in my toes. So I'm trying my best to sit on the back. But if I can get my hands in, that's fine. Keep dropping the seat, but keeping the spine from feeling like it collapses, right? I want to feel my low belly pull into the back of my pelvis. Locks are fine for five, four, three, two, hands down, left leg back, right leg back, plank pose. Pausing in plank, dropping your head, cadding your back, doing the upper back. Notice my hips hope you didn't lift too much. And then letting the chest come down and through, keeping my hips stable, plank pose, downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out. We're gonna put all that now into some more of a flowing movement. So your right leg is gonna step out and forward, and your left leg is going to match that. And you're gonna straighten both of your legs to come up, okay? So I'm gonna take a time to bring that right knee into my chest. So I like to use a clasp to hold it. So what tends to happen is our chest comes back. See if you can bring your chest forward so that it's if you were laying on your back here. Spread those toes. Okay, as you're ready, I'm gonna bend that left knee. I'm gonna hinge at the hips and I'm gonna step that right leg back. Nice and slowly, so I'm gonna high lunge. Okay, so I'm gonna high lunge with my left leg forward. So you have to trust yourself in moving back. So I'm gonna press my right heel towards the floor. I might take two steps to do it, bring my left knee up. Chest is proud, shoulders are down my back. Take a deep breath. Now I'm gonna extend that left leg out in front of me and I'm gonna allow it to heel strike, coming onto the ball mount, now I'm back in that lunge. So we're gonna go a little faster, but I'm just showing this to you first. Okay, so I'm gonna hinge forward, pull that knee in so my spine is long, and then come up and erect. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Come out the way you came, bend the knees, shoot the leg back, taking your time, sending the ball mount back, high lunge. And again, trusting myself, right? So I'm not throwing my energy back, but I'm finding my core, and I'm saying, okay, if I have to take two steps, that's totally fine. Bringing my knee in, and then extending the leg out, lowering it down. Maybe this time it's ball mount to heel. You try that to set, see what that looks like. Just a little hinge forward to bring the right knee in. Then again, stacking shoulders over hips, bring the legs up. Breathing in, breathing out. Back the way I came. Leg shoots back, strong through my core. Set it on back and then a high lunge. And last time through, seeing that heel back. Again, if you take two steps, doesn't matter. Extending the leg out. Pausing for three, for two. And as you're ready, you can heel strike or ball now, come into that lunge. This time the arms are gonna come up. Now I'm gonna have to wiggle to release. Good, and maybe the arms want to come more towards the V today to kind of stretch from the shoulder blades out through the arms. 
maybe upright, but you can lift the scapula a bit to get the low back to move. Take a couple more breaths. Now I want you to interlace the hands and pull the palms up. So really allowing, again, the outer border of the shoulder to roll towards the front edge of the mat as much as you can. Bring that right knee in, keep lifted, and now grab it onto your shin, pull it in. Chest is proud. Then as you're ready, set the right leg down. Move around. Nice work, you guys. Hopefully that was okay. Arms sweep up, inhale. On the exhale, bend and fold forward. Long spine, inhale. Fold again, and then all the way up to sweeping. Right knee becomes the base. You bring the left knee in and up. And I'm breathing nice and proud. Shoulders back. Then bend that knee and then extend that leg back, taking my time before I set it back and I come into a high lunge. And I'm keeping my hands on my waist. If now you know the drill, you're able to put your hands up, that's fine. Now again, I'm going to push off this front heel and see if I can do this. It's taking me two, two or three times. Come up, nice proud chest. Extend the leg out. And again, I like to heel strike first and see what that's like. To me, it tends to be really heavy. So we're trying to lighten that up a bit. Hinge forward, bring the knee in, straighten the leg, breathe and pause. And again, if you're losing your balance, it's a great time to find that compassion, right? To be kind. I care for you. Just let that frustration move through you. And then you can let it be cleansing. <sighs> let it go. As you're ready, bring the leg up. Extend it up. This time I was going to try a ball mountain strike. That tended to be lighter for me. See what it works like for you. Pull that knee in, lift up. Take a deep breath in and out. Bend the knee, shoot it back, warrior three. Nice pause, high lunge. Okay, here's your last time to step it on back. See how you do. Now we're gonna hold the leg up for five, four, three, two. You choose your descent. We're gonna hold in high lunge. Yeah, so again, those arms might wanna come out like a V. Make the palms turn up. Yeah, pull the sternum down and in and lift in through the whole collarbone. Now interlace those hands and press up. Feel like a lightness in your lumbar spine if you can. And as you're ready, you're gonna step tall as you bring the left knee up. Bring it in towards your chest. And then as you take a deep breath in, on the exhale, set the leg back. And again, I'm to dasana, pausing, letting all of that movement come through my body. Hip flexion, extension, inhale, arms up. On the exhale, fold forward. Long spine, inhale. Exhale, step back to plank. So breathing in, breathing out, bring that right knee into your chest. You've already done this. Sweep the right leg out, hover. Set it down. Left knee in towards your chest. And I'm not cutting my back, I'm staying in like a plank pose. Let it come out and hover. Back in, you have two on each side, right knee in. This is all that frontal hip work. Right leg hovers up and back, set it down. I can always do this one. Um, on the knees here. So knee in, shut it back, and down and hover. Here's your last time. All that good core work, just sprinkled in. Who wants to do it for 30 minutes straight? Good downward facing dog or child's pose. Nice work. You can feel what's happening to your body, the heat. Let that heat attune you to your body so that anything that you're feeling, again, you can show that care and compassion and you can let it ride through you. So knees down, releasing your hands, shake them out a bit, hands on the heart for a moment, just kind of getting off the rest, feeling all that heat moving through your body. That loving awareness, come right back into your present moment. Okay, as we're ready, the hands come down. Plank or down dog. 
Left leg steps out and wide. Right leg steps out and wide. Then you get hands to the waist, stand up. Okay. So we're going to keep that left leg on base. We're going to pull that right knee and it's over to the side, you guys. It's over to the side like this. Okay. So they get over to the side. We're going to go groin and stretch the arms and even come out. Take a deep breath in. And then you're going to sit back towards a squat and hover the leg. So I'm going to come over here so you guys can see on this side. Hovering the leg. So I'm still trying to hug the left hip in and back. And again, I'm feeling a lot of good hip work here. And then I'm going to rotate it back and over like we did the shape before. So I'm on the ball mound of the foot. And I'm going to twist. So hands to the heart and I twist to the left. Breathing in and breathing out. Now untwist. Can you come out the way you came? Letting that leg form a circle and hover, and then knee up. Breathing. Then as you're ready, sit back in a squat, hover the leg, make a semicircle and place it behind you. If you want to rest on the side of the foot, because that's better for you, totally fine to do that. Just make an active foot, hands to the heart, turn and twist. Find that big toe line of your left foot. Back to the center. Hover the leg, take it out to the side. Knee up. Here's the last one, you guys. I know you can do it. Out to the side. Semi-circle back. Hands to the heart. And twist. And then take it back to the center. Semi-circle out. Take it all the way up and back. And then place it down. Turn the toes out. Arms come up. Inhale. Exhale, sink on down to that squat. Feel the difference between your sides here. And we're going to do a little twist here. So left hand comes inside the left thigh. Again, I can be on my forearm. Turn and open the right side. And then again, coming in, hand inside the right thigh or on top of the right left arm. Maybe you're gliding side to side. Maybe you're half binding. We'll do this again on the second side. Hands down, and then straighten your legs and you're the distance of your mat with your feet. Fold forward. Stay with that left leg. The hands come over to the left a bit, and we're going to hover the left, the right leg, excuse me, just in front of the toes. So all ten toes are in one line. And then we're going to step on back to the right leg. Long spine, inhale, and then come all the way up. Okay, rolling those shoulders, rolling those shoulders. Okay, we're going to take the left side. So now I'm going to go to the other side of my half so you can see. So the toes start turned out. I bring that left knee up and high. I'm going to turn my right toes in. Sorry, I didn't mean to tell you to turn those out. And then I sink back to a squat and I hover the leg. If I have a wall space, I can totally grab it, you guys. Swing it out to the side, hands to the heart, turn and twist. Come back to the center, semi-circle it to the side, pull it up. Then again, out to the side. You're going whatever pace you need to go, friends. It can be a lot slower. I know sometimes when people say hips, they're like, we didn't want to strengthen the hips, but we're going to get there, I promise. Woo! And then one more time. Take it out to the side. Turn and twist. And then back to the center. Semi-circle out. Bring it all the way back up. And then out to the side. Toes are up. Heels are in. Sink on down. Twist again. So hand inside the thigh. It doesn't matter doing both sides if you wanted to take an internal rotation. Do that. And then switching, internal rotation, and then come out, hands down, step it back to plank. Okay, so you're going to take that right knee wide, back out to hover, swing it out, in and in. Left knee to outer left arm, press it out wide, bring it back in. Just two more each side. Then we're done with hip strengthening. Yay! 
Good, one more time, keep breathing. It's so important that we breathe here. And then last time. Nice, plank pose, downward facing dog. <sighs> nice work, you guys. Put your knees down, take a round of cat-cow for those shoulders, really moving them. And I like to ripple and move around just kind of more organically, it kind of helps me get into those shoulders. All right, take your, from your all fours pose, take your right arm up, big stretch as you press away from the floor with your left, and then thread that right arm under, and you can rest on a pillow with your right side of your face, pressing into that left palm, turn and open. And I want you to feel from the right scapula a stretch through your right palm. So can you connect to the right side of your shoulder blade? with your awareness, and then can you draw that energy away from the middle of the heart, towards the outer border of your shoulder, towards the arm bone, towards the elbow, towards the hand. Nice, take another deep breath in. Deep breath out, and then press through your palm, coming back into all fours, cat cow around. And then the left arm lifts for a twist. So press into the palm, thread it through. I'm resting on the left side of my face. And again, I'm gonna press into my right palm a bit to lift, and then I'm gonna connect to my left shoulder blade. And as if I'm kind of like letting it uh, release away from the back of my heart, towards the outer border of my shoulder, towards my elbow, towards my palm. <sighs> Take another couple breaths. And then pressing into your palm, you're in all fours pose. Cat cow one time. And then neutral spine, sit on back onto your seat. Okay, so we're gonna let the knees come wide. So feeling if you need to sit on a, um, a pillow or a rolled up blanket. And what we're looking for here to know that is if I tend to notice that my tailbone scoops under me, then I know that I need to prop my seat up so that I'm neutral and sitting more on top of my sitting bones. So you can kind of check that out. I'll give you a second to grab a blanket or a block if you need to. So for me, if I kind of swing side to side, I can kind of move my sitting bones back, okay? You're gonna take your right hand to your right thigh, so not the knee joint, the thigh. My left hand comes down to the side, and I'm gonna turn towards my left as I press and open that right hip joint. So kind of like that hip crease. Now do some really deep breathing here, friends. I can bend that left elbow as much as I need and really try to soften this whole right thigh. Let the neck go. Nice. And then come up to center. And then we're going to switch. Left hand goes somewhere along the thigh, not the knee. Right? We want to go from, because we really want to clear out the tension that might be here from all that hip flexion work. So I'm going to kind of dig in and then push it out and away, like I'm clearing it out as I lean towards my right side. So I know you did a lot of strengthening work today, but that's also really helpful for stabilizing the hip joint, right? It doesn't just need to be open and mobile, it needs to be strong, so we did both through that active mobility. So hopefully you'll feel some relief if you're having any kind of low back discomfort or knee pain. Good, now coming into the center. So I can grab onto my ankles and lift up, or I can also press my hands back behind me, yeah? So long spine. Or I can fold in if that feels good. It's really whatever is calling to me today. So I'm going to give you two options for the next shape. If um, a seated forward fold works for you, then that's great. Again, we're looking at the same types of things, so I want to be on my sitting bones long low back. So sometimes staying here with bent knees can be helpful in just kind of letting your knees slowly and then kind of noticing what happens. And at any point the pelvis turns under, 
then it's perhaps like sitting on, on a prop is helpful. Otherwise, this is a great one to do. Yeah, or both legs. So I get under that, allow myself to fold on in. Saying hello to the hamstrings. We're gonna be here for a few more breaths. So if you wanna switch sides, if you're going two sides, taking your time. Relaxing to the jaw and neck, and again, finding that care and compassion. Okay, and then slowly, slowly, kind of shake it out if you need to. We're gonna head onto our backs, and if you have a pillow, that's great. You really don't even have to have a pillow or a block for this one. So again, I'm gonna to come to that all fours position, and I'm gonna let my heel slowly come forward, right? So if I wanted to put something underneath my lumbar, I could. Even a, just a gentle bowl blanket or a dishcloth. Again, I want it to be um, on the lumbar, and I want to feel a gentle, and again, I say gentle, like we're not looking for huge stretches here. And allowing my low back to relax on this. So this is too much, I want to add a blanket. I definitely don't want to feel any discomfort in the lumbar. So we're trying to calm the area of the psoas, um, that's the muscle that runs from T12, your thoracic vertebra, around your pelvis, and it starts some, somewhere down in the, to the lower trochanter of your thigh. So it's this huge, like, 16-inch muscle. And it can generally be one that transmits, um, again, safety, security, kind of like the connection to the earth with our body. So in times of stress or anxiety, this muscle can get taut or can be um, malnourished with hydration. So I want you just to put your hand there, your hand at your heart. Take five or so really deep breaths, just relaxing as much as you can, seeing that easefulness to your body here. Even if you don't feel that easefulness is what's happening, you might feel that it feels tight or you might not feel anything at all. But again, just allowing the breath to imagine that we're just lengthening or softening. relaxing. So it's wherever you feel led to put your hands on your frontal hip. Maybe long deep breaths. A longer exhale sometimes is really helpful. I care for you. I am loving awareness. Those are some of my favorite mantras. Really just feeling, again, the, the healing of your touch and your awareness is so much a part of our healing. It's where, where our awareness goes, the energy flows, right? So if you're sending healing energy from your heart, that's powerful. Don't ever minimize your ability to be such a powerful healer in your own life through your awareness, through your touch, through your intention. So again, we're gonna let the heel drag up as we come back up. And we're gonna explore the second side. So hand on the opposite hand on the heart. And again, I'm just gonna let the heel slide out nice and slow. And I might just feel out just the leg extending without any type of lift. And then I can play with if I want a block or a blanket underneath. Again, it's not about the sensation that I'm getting a really big stretch, but more that I'm softening and able to relax the muscles and the tissues here. So you might even feel like a gentle dilation of that left hip point away from your belly button. You might feel the muscles in the frontal hip kind of soften towards the back of the pelvis. You can just visualize this or imagine that it's doing this. And that's also a way to guide your body without forcing it. Just intentionalizing that softening, that I'm safe. So that we tell our body there's no tiger chasing us, even if it feels like at times we experience anxiety or fear or worry. But in this moment, I'm safe. And again, keep your breath deep.
Sighing, bubbling lips, all that good stuff. And then slowly bringing that heel back up. And again, however you want to rest, knees in, heels out. If there's another shape, happy baby you want, maybe both hands go to the heart. Taking about 10 breaths to just surrender into this practice this morning that you experienced, that you felt in your body. What you felt move through you emotionally, mentally. And as you lay here, I'm going to be sending you energy from my heart, loving, healing energy. And so see if you can receive that. Sending you the courage to feel, the courage to have the awareness of what you need, the courage to be compassionate, accepting, or whatever it is you feel. Feeling the connection of this community that's gathered right now. And if you don't know anyone, we're still connected. We're still gathered together. And there's means the healing power and the connection's even more elevated. Our intentions are even more powerful. Love is the one healing power, right? That transcends time and space. So take in that loving connection into your heart, send it anywhere you need to send it in your body, in your mind, in your emotional body. Maybe it's like a warm blanket you can wrap around you when you need it. 